Good morning, good morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have been talking for the last couple of weeks about the theme, the Ten Commandments. And our subject for today is Thou Shalt Not Covet. It's the last of the Ten Commandments, but it's not unimportant and it's not the least of the commandments. As a matter of fact, covetousness was the starting point, the starting point of sin mm -hmm. itself. You know, the word covet means to wrongfully or to inordinately desire or want or wish for or crave another's property okay this is where eve went wrong listen to me now longing for and desiring that which was forbidden you know covetousness pushes us into disobedience it pushes us into greed and excess especially in the realm of money or possessions, or even sexual conduct. The Bible declares that the love, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm. Now, I can say it this way. Covetousness is the root of all evil. Remember Eve? Remember how she fell? And we'll talk about that more in a minute. The, the foundational, listen to this, the foundational reason and cause for us being in so much debt is not poverty. We want to put it on poverty. I said the foundational reason and cause for us being in so much debt is not poverty, but rather it is covetousness. We see it, we want it more, we want more, we want better, we want bigger. Covetousness. Mm. You know, we live in a system, especially here in the U.S., we live in a system that is based on credit and debt, fueled by covetousness. The whole nation is in debt. <laughs> The, the whole the, not, it's not just the, the individual people who are a part who are US citizens that live in credit and debt but the whole, the whole nation and that's fueled by covetousness let's pray our father which art in heaven hallowed would be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in our lives lord set us free Free to live free from covetousness. Help us not to be regulated by and driven by and controlled by and moved by covetousness. It's so subtle, Lord. That'll be occurring in our lives and we won't even know it. We'll be saying it's God's will that I say this or do that or have this. It's a blessing when it's nothing but covetousness. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the scriptures. Let's look at Exodus. Remember, we're talking about the 10th commandment. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. What does it say there? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Nor anything. Anything. The, the Bible is telling us not to covet anything. That, that's the sum of it. Mm -hmm. Don't covet anything that's not yours. Mm -hmm. That God has not given to you. Don't covet it. Remember Eve? The devil comes along and makes her to feel that she needed something else. She needed something more. God is withholding something good from you. 
if you'll just take this that God has forbidden that you have. You know, uh, when Eve put forth her hand and allowed that fruit to be in her hand, she stole. And she stole because she coveted. God said, don't eat of it. As a matter of fact, when she was talking to the devil, she said that God said, she overstated it, but she said, God said, don't eat of it, neither shall you touch it. She said, that's what God said. And here now she's touching it. And eating of it. She took something that wasn't hers because she coveted it. She felt like that this would make her like God. That's what the devil told her. It'll make you like God. And so she desired it. Don't covet anything. What God has given you. That's what you need to be content with. Thou shalt not covet. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. What does it say? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. Now... And as much as it's said, having a form of godliness, this is primarily talking to church people. They have a form of godliness. But it's not genuine, that's what the Bible is saying. It's saying that in the last days, those are the days we're living in. Mm -hmm. Perilous times shall come. And it names a number of things, bolsters, yes. proud, proud blasphemers, disobedient to prayer, unthankful, mm -hmm. unholy, without natural, natural infection, infection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minders, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But the first thing it named before it named all of that mm -hmm. is covetous. Huh? Co that's first thing on the first list. Thing. Covetous. Mm -hmm. They love their own self, therefore they're covetous. Mm -hmm. They want more. They want bigger. They want better. Covetous. Longing for stuff that they got no business having that's not going to do them any good. That's what's going to be in the last days. And those are the days we're in. No wonder we're in so much debt. You know, this credit thing. You don't have to have the money. Just get it. Pay later. And you get in a web that you can't get yourself out of. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2 Peter 2, and uh, verses 2 and 3. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil, evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. This happens in the world and in the church through covetousness. With feigned words, they will make merchandise of you. Preachers do that. But listen, have you ever looked at the television and seen a commercial come on? 99.9999% of them are lies. They're just preying on the fact that they know human nature is covetous. Mm -hmm. And they make something look so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need to eat it. You, you need to drink, drink it. it. <laughs> you need to buy it. You need to have it. By the time you get through looking at that, I mean, your closet, you're already, you're already full. You got to go get some more. Yeah, Covetous. Mm. You got a place to live in. You got a roof over your head, but you need a better place, a bigger place, more expensive place. You know what I mean. Mm. Yeah, you need it. You got to have it. Covetous. Playing on our fallen sinful nature. Here, here I mean, it's a, a popular thing, ministers talking about if you just plant a seed in my ministry, God will bless you. Your blessing will come, you know. And people, because they're covetous, they want money and houses and lands. They're not thinking about uh, more patience and more 
tolerance and long more suffering. long suffering and forgiveness, forgiveness and all that. Yeah. They're not thinking about that. Joy and peace. When they're talking about blessings, they're talking about material things, mm -hmm. and monetary things, and temporal things. And so when this man says, "Come to my church," put my, you put money in the plate here. He, he's, he's got private planes and Rolls Royces and all that type of thing. You just put money in the plate and God will bless you. And them churches are full. Full of people. Driven by covetousness. Help us, Lord. The whole world is. It might be the Tenth Commandment, but it's not unimportant. The Bible says God instructs us as his children. That's in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 and 3. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, it names. Let it not be once named among you. It tells us that we are to be like Jesus who sacrificed himself. He, he, he gave. He didn't collect. He gave himself. He gave his life. You know, one of the things about us as fallen sinful human beings, we, we want to accumulate. Accumulate. And thus it puts us in all kind of debt. God help us. God help us. You go to a foreign country and those folk look at you and uh, sometimes they just shake their head, but they say, well, oh, that's, that's an American for you. And we sitting over here talking about how poor we are. We show up over there with a suitcase or two. They don't have that many, that, 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 that many clothes. What do they come over here with all that stuff for? Some of them have one or two items that they wear. We're talking about ministers of the church, the pastor of the church. You wear the same shirt. You might have two of them, you know, wash them out and wear them. You know, that's life. One suit, you know, a pair of shoes. I said a pair of shoes, you know. That, that's the way they live. And they, they're not stressed or, 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 or pressured. Then we come over there, we got a suitcase, two suitcases, three suitcases. They say, what in the world they bring all that stuff for? They're not going to say it to you. <laughs> but we are rich and increased with goods and don't even know it. We're declaring that we're poor. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Lord, help me. When we're busy uh, bringing this stuff upon ourselves, all of those, you know, the house note and the, the car notes and the cell phone and the this and the that and the this and the that and the this and the that and this credit card and that credit card. No, Lord, help me. When it's covetousness that's driving all of that more than often. The Bible says, Colossians 3, verses 5 and 6, Something very important. What does it say? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. We, do we want to do something that brings the wrath of God upon us? No, we don't. But if we want to do that, then one of the things that we can do is be covetous. The Bible says covetousness is idolatry. Uh-oh, that's what the second commandment talks about, idol worship. And covetousness is idolatry. The Bible says put to death, mortify your members which are upon the earth. And it names a number of things, fornication, uncleanness, evil, concupiscence, that's evil desires. And covetousness has got to go because covetousness is idolatry. That's what the Bible says. It drives you to put something else in place of God. It drives you to put other things first. It drives you to devote your life to other things. You know, we got to work around the clock to pay for all that stuff we have that's going to burn anyway. That's what it's going to It's going to burn up in the lake of fire. And we spend the majority of our time and effort and talent and money on these things, covetousness. Help us, Lord. And the Bible says covetousness is idolatry. 
And so the Bible gives some counsel. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 and 6. What does it say? Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is my helper. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my all in all. Mm -hmm. As long as I got a friend in the Lord, I don't need nothing or nobody else. Be content. The Bible says, you know, unless we're born again, unless the Lord help us and change us and purify us, we will not be content. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, be content with such things as you have. Mm -hmm. Eve was not content with what she had. Mm -hmm. she, she wanted more. She bought into the lie of the devil. You will be like God. And the Bible says when she saw that the fruit was to be desired because it was going to make one wise she took of it and did eat she wasn't content with what she had she had all she needed but she was deceived into believing that she needed more and so the bible says let your conversation be without covetousness we always want more and we call it the blessing of the lord and we actually get on our knees and pray for it Often, God help us. Now, this is a little far-fetched and a little foreign to most of us. We live in the world, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We're, we were raised in a system that is based on covetousness and debt and credit. And so that, that's what we know. It's all we know. It's all we've ever been around. It's, it's what we've been molded in. And so some of this stuff just seems foreign. And by the time we get through explaining this away, you don't have to really do this. I mean, the Lord wants you to have nice things. The Lord wants this. I mean, it's all right to, 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 to want things at time to time. And by the time we get through working with it, we take all of this that we're, that we're saying right now and throw it in the trash can. And go right back into living a covetous lifestyle. And we will not be different. We will not see differently unless the Lord help us and change us. 1 Corinthians 5. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother to be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. Hmm. That's the counsel of the Bible. Hmm. It's not me making it up and being harsh. That's the counsel of the Bible. In other words, the Bible saying if you're going to be a buddy buddy with somebody, mm -hmm. if you're going to have a companion that you fellowship with and just spend time with and you go out and eat together or come to each other's home to, to break bread together and to pray together, don't do it with a fornicator. It's not mm -hmm. saying you don't witness the folk who are fornicators and covetous and idolaters. You, you, you reject them and just hide yourself from them. It's not saying that. A drunkard or an extortioner. A drunkard or an extortioner needs the gospel that you have. But if you're going to keep company, if you're going to have a partner and a friend and a personal companion, don't have one that's a fornicator or who is covetous or who is an idolater. And you know the Bible we just read it, said that covetousness is idolatry. That's what it is. That's not the type of people you keep company with. You know, come on, child, let's go out and do some shopping. <laughs> it's sure to influence you. Oh, look, and you're in their house having a meal. And look, I got and I got this for a good price. Well, where is it? It's over at so-and-so. But look, look, after we eat, let's just run over there. I'll show you. <laughs> I mean, it's going to help pull you in a wrong direction. Don't hang out with a drunkard. Huh? Oh, yeah, you been drinking. Yeah, you fool around, and next thing you know, you're having a little taste, especially oh, yeah. if you've done it in times past. A little wine. Don't, don't hang out with an extortioner. Mm -hmm. You'll fool around and be practicing that yourself. 
or railer. You know, sometimes people are just plain railers. Mm -hmm. You sit and listen to them, and you sit and listen to them, you sit and listen to them, and next thing you know, you join right into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, child, I know that's true. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know what else? By the time you, you get finished with it, you sort of pick up that mess yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says, don't keep company with a covetous person. The Bible says also in uh, Ephesians 5, 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. A covetous man who is an idolater. Hmm. No covetous man is going to have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Huh? He was busy coveting other things and putting other things in the place of God. He coveted other things. He desired other things. He wanted other things. He wished for other things. He craved for other things and went and got them. And they sucked up all of his time, his talents, his effort, and for sure, his money. They were God's. Now he, he let him tell it it was not so. Just the blessing of the Lord. And it's all right to have nice things. And he just worked with it and worked with it. And, and, and he'll persuade you if you listen to him long enough. But no covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. We want to be careful, folks. We want to be careful. Now, if we want to covet, mm -hmm. if we just yeah. got to covet, uh -huh. okay, the Bible tells you how to place that. It tells you what to covet. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 through 30. No, through 31. Let's look at that. And God have set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more perfect, more excellent way. The Bible is talking about the various gifts that God gives to his body parts, church members, all right? And God says, if you want to covet, covet these gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you covet. Yeah. The gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, covered that. Mm. Not money and houses and lands and positions and material things and monetary things. You go all out to get it. You go in all kind of debt talking about you're poor. You ain't poor. You're not poor. People on welfare here are rich when you go over to other countries, Africa and India. Yeah. They're rich, man. Plenty. They can go out that door any day of the week and go over to some agency and get some food or, and other stuff. They don't have that availability over in other countries. They're rich and have access to so much. You know, we're just so poor. Mm -hmm. Whole church is full of folk driving nice cars and they're talking about they're poor. Mm -hmm. I'm just poor. It's not true. But covetousness is so... Uh, dominant among us. We think that way. We really do. We look over at somebody who's a billionaire and say, because I'm not like him, I'm poor. <laughs> because I got all these payments, I got to pay, and the reason why you got them most of the time is because of covetousness. I got all these payments that I got to pay, and thus, I'm poor. It's not so. It's not so. If you're going to uh, have a lot of payments that weigh you down, let it be the, the, the payment of uh, you got to pay for some books. You got uh, 10,000 steps of Christ and you, and, and you got to pay for it. Let, let it be that. huh? Let, let it be that you gave uh, 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 $1,000 for some ministry that's uh, reaching folk in the 1040 wind and, and, and you're low on money because of that. Let, let, let it be because you did that type of thing. 
Not because you invested in stuff that's going to burn up in the lake of fire. You remember the man who had one talent? And the Bible says he buried, he buried his talent in the earth? That's what we do. We take our money and bury it in material things, earthly things, temporal things. We're burying our talent in the earth. And when the Lord comes and he says, okay, I want some return on this. What did you do with it? And you're going to say, I buried it in the earth. Mm. Look at that nice home over there. And look at that decent furniture. That, that car or two or three. And those clothes that I had in those two or three or four closets. And that's what I did with it. And God's going to say, well, you buried it in the earth. That's what you did with it. Where are the souls that should be saved because of it? You, you thought that that was wasting money and throwing money away. Therefore, you invested it in the things that you coveted. That was your God. That's what you served. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 39, what does it say? Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. The Bible plainly tells you there to covet. <laughs> the commandment says thou shalt not covet. Okay, anything. But here it says, covet to prophesy, covet to preach the word, covet to teach the word. Huh? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, covet to say so, covet to bring some soul to Christ, covet to open your mouth and give praise and thanksgiving and a testimony when you're in the store, on the prayer line, in the church, doesn't matter, in, in your home, covet to do that. If you want to covet something, covet earnestly the best gifts. Those are the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. Let's covet that. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Let's covet those things instead of the temporal things, mm -hmm. the monetary things. Covet to prophesy. Brethren, Covet to prophesy, mm -hmm. speaking the word of God, speaking the word of truth as prophesying. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are thankful for your word. Broaden our understanding of the Ten Commandments. And then, Lord, we can't keep them. Mm. You know that. So you change us, then you write them in our heart so that we can keep it in spirit and in truth because it's what we are. Do that work for us, Lord. We can't just read it and then go out and force ourselves to do it. We, we are not able because of our nature, because of what we are. So now, Lord, change us. Give us the power of the Holy Ghost that will, will govern our lives and our attitudes and our motives and our desires and help us to do right for the right reason, motivated by the right principles because the Holy Spirit lives within us, Lord. Fix us so that we don't covet the unwanted things, the, 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 the evil things, the, the wrong things, the earthly and fleshly things. Help us not to covet those things. But if we're going to covet, help us do like what the Bible says. Covet the gifts of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. Help us to covet, to prophesy, to open our mouths for the Lord and for the sake of the salvation of other souls. Help us to covet in that vein, Lord. Bless us. We love you. Keep us. Change us. Save us. And use us to save others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints.